and then I'm going to bring the message uh, that the Lord laid on my heart. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 9. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 9. Please pray and, and listen. Give me attention for a few minutes. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. I'd like to preach for a little while this morning on the subject that verse 9 said, we see Jesus. We see Jesus. I'd like for you to go on a little journey with me this morning through the life, the public ministry and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you think about this this morning. Jesus Christ lived 2,000 years ago. Imagine if you'd never heard this before. And he only preached three and one half years. That's not very long by preaching standards. Many preachers preach 30, 40, 50, some even 60 years. Jesus, three and a half. No recordings, no tapes, no CDs, no YouTube, no internet, no, just word of mouth. He said this, and they went, he said this, and some wrote it down. How did that one man affect the world like he has? Somebody put it like this. Here's a man who's born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in a carpenter's shop till he was 30 years old and three and a half years was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never owned a home. He never had a wife or children. He never went to college. He never traveled even 200 miles from the place that he was born. He never did anything that any, most people associate with a great person. He had no credentials. He had nothing to do with this world except the power of his manhood. While still a young man, the tide of popular opinion was turned against him. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies. He went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed on a cross between two thieves. His executioners gambled for the only thing that he had in this world, the clothes that he had on his back, he, his coat. When he was dead, he was taken down and laid in a borrowed tomb through the pity of a friend. Now think about that. Well, who is that? Nobody ever heard of him. But 2,000 years have come and gone. Today, he is the centerpiece of human race and the leader of progress. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that were ever built, all the parliaments that ever sat, put together, have not affected the life of human beings as much as that one man. When we sing that song a while ago, I asked them to sing that song for a reason. Jesus, what a wonderful name. Let's look at him this morning. Oh, that's why Ralph Waldo Emerson said this. He said his name is not as much written in history as it is plowed through the history of the world. You can't get rid of it. He's everywhere you look. You can't live without him and you can't live... Uh, uh, do without him and his mercy and grace. Let's see him just a minute. He's the turning point of history. They date our calendar by his birth. When somebody says A.D. and B.C., B.C. means before Christ, before he came. That's 4,000 years back that way. A.D. is the years after he was here. A.D. means Anno Domini, the year of our Lord when he came to this world. And every, you know what the funniest thing is? Every atheist in California or Hollywood 
has to write down his birthday when they sign their check or fill out a job application trying to get a gig making fun of the right people. And, uh, and they, they have to use his birthday. Amen. Uh, how old are you, Kathy? Uh, 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 you want the truth? 104. Uh, well, you had to, you date that from his birthday. I'm trying to stay in a good mood over that. Uh, but it, it's really how old are you, Bill? Uh, Mar? Uh, well, I don't know. He's petrified. He, he's pickled like the rest of them people in Hollywood. They ain't preserved. They're pickled, buddy. I mean, their face looks like his. I, 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 I'm glad to have you. I, I, I'm young as ever was. And I got a big knot right there. That's your belly button. Uh, they pulled it up there so much. Uh, but I'm telling you, brother, they have to date it from his birthday. Hey, everybody say hallelujah right there. If you love Jesus, you won't mind me kicking the gods of this world a little bit and exalting his name. His name, that's above every name. Hallelujah. I want to say a few things about it this morning. And I want to say we see Jesus as the Son of God. In Matthew 16, verse 13, 14, 15, 16, it said, they asked him, he said, who do men say that I am? One says you this, one says you that. And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the right answer. Two times, God the Father at his baptism and on the Mount of Transfiguration said, this is my beloved Son. Right out of the sky came a voice. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The Lord never said that about Buddha. The Lord never said that about Muhammad. The Lord never said that about Mahatma Gandhi or Guru Maharaji Ji, Habi Dabi Dabi Dabi, uh, them people, crazy people like that. He, he never said that about nobody but the Lord Jesus Christ. John knew him in John ch uh, chapter 1 when John was baptizing down there, and all these people come and get baptized, get baptized, and they said, Man, who are you? Are you Christ? He said, No, I ain't nothing. There comes one after me who's mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to get down and unloose. And he said, I baptized for him. And about that time one day somebody said look and here come Jesus down the hill and John stopped what he was doing and said hold it right there you stand, they don't get in the water yet and he turned around and he looked and he said behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world ladies and gentlemen we see him as the Son of God when you read your Bible do you realize that Matthew who gives the genealogy of Christ he says begot 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 starts all the way from the beginning so and so begot so and so begot so and so begot so and so begot so and so and then when it gets to Jesus and Joseph he does not say he begot him it said he that was born of Mary who was the husband of Joseph you know why he don't say Joseph begot him because Joseph did not have one thing to do with him getting here. His father was God. His mother was Mary. That hurts my feeling. God loves women more than he does. You know, see, see how y'all are? Uh, I'm telling you something, brother. That's God's plan. Ain't none of our business how he chose to do it. His father was God. All the false religions teach uh, that, that, that so and so's good and so and so was that. But his mother was Mary. On the cross he prayed for his enemies. You know why he said Father, forgive them for he knows what we're doing. He never did pray for himself. He never prayed for himself. He never had to ask forgiveness. He didn't do nothing wrong. He was, we see him this morning as the Son of God. He is the greatest man that ever lived. He is the greatest person that's ever walked across the face of this earth. And you do well this morning to just fall absolutely head over heels in love with Jesus Christ. If you'll put him first and honor him and do right, he'll work things out in your life. He'll get you out of the mess you're in. He'll things will begin to straighten out when he is in his proper place. Ladies and gentlemen, we see him first as the son of God. Hallelujah. He was either liar, lunatic, or Lord. Jesus Christ was the biggest fraud the world's ever seen, or he's who he said he was. And history backs it up that he was who he said he was. Ladies and gentlemen, he, why would he willingly die? Why would he not even fight back? Why would he give his life on the cross? He was the Son of God. Number two, we see Jesus as the world's greatest teacher. 
Now you read the Bible and you see Jesus as he taught. He was not only a preacher, he was a teacher. And I'm talking about a teacher. If you're a teacher, any kind of teacher, you know how you learn how to teach? Watch how Jesus did. He saw what they needed and give them what they needed. Somebody told me one time, they said, Brother Danny, you just tell people what they need to hear. That's right. I'm trying to do what he does. I'll give you an example. John In John 3, here comes Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. Big shot. I'm telling you, he had high position of the Pharisees. He was one of the most religious, well-known people in town. He comes to the Lord one time by night. And there's a reason for that. He probably didn't want people to see him. He said, I don't want my friends to see me sneaking over talking to him, but I'd like to know what makes him tick. And so he come to Jesus by night, and he said, uh, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. You're just this wonderful teacher, and, and we, you know, we, we know we know everything. All of us religious leaders, we know it all. Uh, da, 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 da. He, he didn't have much sense, or he wouldn't have been trying to talk to Jesus like that. And the Lord looked back at him, and he said, uh, you must be born again. He said, I can't believe you said that. You said it to me, a religious leader. I don't know. You see how the Lord gave him what he needed? He didn't need to talk about Jewish history and, and Hebrew antiquity and what happened in Moses' time and the relics that were left over from the Old Testament. He said, you need to be born again, dude. No, he didn't say that. And uh, he said, you, need, you must be born again. And uh, the Lord wouldn't stoop to that street language. And you know what he said? And Nicodemus said, well, uh, uh, what do you mean I need to be born again? Can a man enter, go back into his mother's womb and be born? See how dumb he is? See how clueless sometimes religious leaders can be? He said, can I go back into my mother's womb? And Jesus said, you don't even know what I'm talking about. That which is born of flesh, like you was your mama, that's flesh. And that's water. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. He said, good night. I ain't never heard nobody in my life talk like he talks. It's just like, bam, everything that comes out of him just hits me. And he, he said, uh, that was born of the flesh. You're born of water and of the spirit. First birth, water. Second birth, spirit. And Nicodemus said, well, that church of Christ preacher said that's baptism. And he said, that's because he ain't listening. I said, the first, either born of the flesh is flesh, and either born of the second time is what? Well, read the context, Nicodemus. And Nicodemus went on. And I think he got it because he showed up a little later on over there. And I believe the old boy made it in and got saved. And then there was the woman at the well in John chapter 4. She came to the Lord one time, and she was down there drawing water. And the Lord said, uh, give me the drink. And she went, you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. Y'all don't even talk to us. I can't believe you're speaking to me. You're not prejudiced against me. I'm not, I'm not even a Jew. And uh, she, he said, uh, just give me a drink of water and don't worry about it. And she said, uh, uh, well, uh, our fathers worshiped in Jerusalem. And you say that men, uh, how, she knew, how she knew all that, nobody knows. But she knew all this religious stuff, sort of like them we talked to on bus route yesterday. They know everything about church and everything and living like a devil. And, uh, and, I, and he said... Uh, uh, you, 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 instead of arguing over this doctrine, maybe you should uh, go call your husband. And uh, she said, why would I call my husband? I said, she said, uh, uh, why, why would you say that? I, I ain't got no husband. And she thought she'd throw him off, and he said, you said that right, honey. Not right now, you ain't. Uh, you've had five, and you're shacking up with somebody that ain't your husband right now. She said, Who'd you tell, who told you that? I know it wasn't none of my people because y'all don't talk to us, and we don't talk to you. And uh, by, by the time it all got done, she got all her friends down there and said, come see a man that told me everything I've ever done. I don't know how he knew it, how he knew it. I've been married five times, and I'm shacking up, and and living in sin. How did he know that? I'm telling you, brother, we see him as the world's greatest teacher. Amen. Oh, it goes on and on and on and on like that. It just, I mean, story after story. Uh, he told them in uh, John 5, the pool of Bethesda, John 11, Mary and Martha. I like what he told Mary and Martha over there. And Lazarus had died. And they said, but Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus looked at them and said, I am the resurrection and the life. And they said, what do you mean by that? We know he'll rise at the last day. And he said, listen, girls, you need to get your doctrine straight. He said, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoso liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And they said, well, what do you mean by that? And he said, uh, whoso liveth and believeth in me, rapture shall never die. But whoso uh, lives and believes in me, though he were dead, 
resurrection shall live again. I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, nobody could teach like Jesus Christ. That's why they told him disciples. They said, lo, they've been with Jesus. You sat at the feet of Jesus Christ three and a half years, you're going to have an education. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the longer I live, the more I realize you want to be a smart person, you look at what he says and base your life on what he says and pattern. I mean, think about it, people. Come on. Where do we get our society? Go somewhere where the Bible's not been taught and look how people live. They look like animals. They're, they're like brutes beast where the Bible's not living and preached. Where did we learn to love people? All these people in Hollywood and politics that deny the Bible, where'd they even learn that we're supposed to help the poor and open our doors to him? They learned it from him. Do unto others as you'd have them to do unto you. Uh, amen, the first and great commandment. Go the second mile. Where'd we learn that? From Jesus Christ. Uh, turn the other cheek. Where'd we learn that? Where'd we learn how to be nice and polite? And it's against our nature. We learned it from him the greatest teacher that's ever been. Amen. Like that one little kid jumped up and he said, uh, and Lord, forgive us our trash baskets as we forgive those that trash basket against us. And, and that's the way it is. That's about the way it is. That's the way we should do sometimes. We learned it from the greatest teacher that's ever lived, the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you can see him this morning. I hope when you leave here, you ain't gonna say, boy, that choir sure did good. Ah, old preacher, he's all right. I hope you don't do that. I hope when you walk out that door, you're thinking, Jesus, 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 what a wonderful name. Glory to God. Good to be saved. Good to know who he is. Leave worshiping him this morning. Leave with your eyes on him. Leave with your affection on him today, people. Get in your heart. Get it down in there and live. Light, and he'll bless you for it. We see him as teacher. Not only that, number three, we see Jesus as our best friend. We see Jesus as our best friend. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I mean, it's Jesus in sickness. It's Jesus in health. It's Jesus in poverty. It's Jesus in wealth. It's Jesus for joy. It's Jesus for sorrow. It's Jesus today. And it'll be Jesus tomorrow. Amen. Jesus is my life and Jesus is my light. Jesus is my morning, my noon, and my night. Jesus, when all around gives way, he is my everlasting way. Jesus is my rest. Jesus is my food. Jesus is my, my highest good. Jesus is my well-beloved and my friend. Jesus is my pleasure, world without end. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my portion. Jesus is my God. Jesus is my shepherd and I am his sheep. Jesus himself my soul doth keep. Jesus is my teacher. Jesus is my God. Jesus is my rock and in him I hide. Jesus is the everlasting bread. Jesus is the precious blood he shed. Jesus is my glory. Jesus is my crown. Jesus is the plant of the great renown. Jesus is my comforter on high. Jesus is my hope as the time draweth nigh. He's everything to me. He's everything. Bless his holy name today. I, we ought to see Jesus when we read that Bible and live our daily life. We see him as our best friend through all the troubles and triumphs, the good times and the bad times that I've been through in my life. The Lord Jesus has been my best friend. And you know, I've got friends sitting in here this morning. I can look around here and see many friends that I've got. Lord, I, I can even start my, my three girls over there. All three of them this morning have been my friend. Them girls girls have stuck by me when it wasn't easy. Them girls stuck by me when it wasn't popular. Them girls, and they've been my friend and, I, and my wife. I, what a friend she's been. Y'all don't know the work she's just done lately. I, I mean, she's working them bus routes, jumping around from one to the other, staying up late at night, doing the church bulletin, right? and, 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 she, and she does all kinds of stuff uh, that people don't know if she's been my friend. I can start naming friends in here this morning, but I'm telling you, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our sorrow. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our trouble. He knows your struggles. He knows what you're going through. He knows your financial burdens. He knows your family problems. He knows your marriage stresses. And he's your friend. You know what a friend is? A friend that knows, somebody that knows your faults and still loves you and sticks with you anyway. 
Don't teach people to act like you're your friend. First time something goes wrong, they're gone. You ever had anybody like that? The Bible said uh, he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You know what a friend is? A friend's somebody that runs in when the whole world runs out. If you, if you got five friends this morning, you ought to count yourself very lucky. Most people don't. You got a lot of people think you, you think you're your friends. They say they are, but when times are rough, they're nowhere to be found. We see him as our friend. Nothing too big, nothing too little. The other day we was out working, we've been out working in the yard and since I've been preaching this week and we built, burned big old piles of trash. Lord, we had the office fire ever was the other night. And we was out there and we had two nights in a row, Thursday night and Friday night, big fire. And I loved it, man. I loved to set stuff on fire and watch burn. Old Dennis over there like the blow to the kingdom come. Uh, he, uh, he took a big thing of gas about that. I said, throw it on there, brother. And he threw that gas on that fire. And I, it was too much, I think. It was too much. I was standing about as far as from here to them rocks. It went kaboom, and I felt it like it hit me like that right there. The air thought it was in Vietnam, brother. And it's throwing hand grenades or something. Well, we burnt that wood, and when I got in that night, I had a little splinter. I still got the mark right there. I had a splinter in my finger. I hate to have a splinter. Isn't that the most aggravating thing in the world? A stupid splinter. Look how big I am, and that little tiny splinter was ruining my evening, I'm telling you. I mean, that's awful. I, 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 one time I, had a little, I was in a trailer, and a little old, old trailer, you know they put all them old paneling on them, in them old trailers. Everybody lived in a trailer had paneling. Don't claim to be an American if you ain't lived in a trailer that had paneling. And, and something went in one of the kids, knocked them off, and I reached down behind the couch and reached down like that. And I run my hand up, and one went way up in there, about halfway through my finger. I thought I'd die. I'm telling you, and the best thing to do is right then, before it even gets sore, just tough it out and get it out. And we, I picked at that thing, picked at that thing, finally got a pen, a little needle, and dug it out, dug it out of there. And I said, I'm going to get this over with. As long as you leave it in there, the worst it's going to hurt. And I dug that thing out, and then I got to thinking about that, and I thought, does Jesus care? Does Jesus, who runs the universe and checks the heat of the sun and keeps solar system going and the moon, does he care about me having a splinter? The Bible said he's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing too small, nothing too big to pray about. He's tough. You know, we think, oh, he's running the world. He ain't got time to fool my little old. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I believe the Lord looked down there and say, that dumb Danny has messed around. You're supposed to wear gloves when you do stuff like that. I don't ever think about gloves. I don't even think about weed eater glasses until something hits me in the eye. I, you know, this, but I, don't, I don't ever mess with gloves until I get, I said, I should have wore gloves. I can't stand them things on my hand. You can't do nothing with them on there. But I'm telling you, he's my friend. He's my friend. He was Charles Wagle's friend when he, when, he, when he sat down at that piano and came in and there's a note on the door that said his wife had left him. She didn't want to live with him no more. And he sat down and wrote, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. If you've been through a divorce, if you've been through that, the dumbest and worst thing you can possibly do is go to a club looking for somebody. Or go anywhere looking for somebody for that matter. You know what you better do? Scrooge up. That's a Greek word. That means slide near the Lord Jesus Christ. Get close to him and let him work things out in your life. Amen? He's your friend. But let me say fourthly, I'm going to hurry. Fourthly, we see him as our substitute. We see him as our substitute. First John chapter 2 tells us about if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He's our propitiation. What does them big words mean like substitution, propitiation, sanctification, redemption? All those words that end with T-I-O-N, study them great words in the Bible. They, they talk about them in law courts, but people, we've dumbed everything down so much now, people don't even know what them words mean. Substitution, propitiation. That means this. That means if I had to go to court this morning, uh, the judge was there, and they got a case against me, I've got a lawyer. And my lawyer goes between me and that judge, and he'll say, look, judge, it's Danny's this, 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 da, 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 and somehow or another try to get me off the hook. Now, Jesus Christ, in a sense, 
as if he's not crooked, is our lawyer. He's our go-between. And he stands in front of the judge, and the judge says, Danny's a sinner. And we say, that's right, amen. Danny's done this. That's right, sure have. Danny, you can't argue with it. He's got it on video. Every sin you've ever committed in your life, it's there. And it'll all be brought out against you. But about that time you're getting ready to be thrown into hell, somebody steps up and says, wait a minute, wait a minute. I paid for that sin. I died. They crucified me. They put nails in his hand. Lord, I don't shut up. I'm going to start shouting and quit breathing. I'm going to put nails in my hand and nails in my feet. I took care of Danny's sin. And God said, is that right? He said, did he trust you? And he'll say, that's right. And the Lord slams a big hammer down and says, not guilty. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. That's our substitute. You see him as a substitute. He paid the debt. He didn't know. I owed a debt I couldn't pay. Thank God, brother, he paid one. I, I, like a man said one time, he said, God let me ask his church, he said, is there anything up in heaven that, that man made, that it made by man? And everybody said, no, no, God made everything up there. And the guy said, yeah, there are. There's one thing. There's one thing in heaven that's man made. The scars in the hands of Jesus Christ as a forever reminder that he paid the debt for mine and your sin. Listen, I wouldn't care if I got, if I got my feelings hurt, if somebody put a scratch on my car, bit my baby in the nursery, I'd be in church serving God because of what he done. But listen, you ought to get up every Sunday morning, march your little self into the house of God, honor God, do right, sir. You ought to be ashamed of yourself after what he done for you to turn your back on him. Thank God we see him as our substitute. Hallelujah for the cross. Hallelujah for the cross. You know what I can do this morning? I can produce. Right here's one. This is just a little one. It's got, this book right here, 410 songs about one man that lived on this earth. And I can show you 10 more song books. So that'd be 4,000 songs wrote about one man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Show me 4,000 songs they sing about Muhammad. All their songs. You say, you shouldn't make fun of other people's religion. It's of the devil. I like that. I ain't making fun of it. I'm preaching against it. It's wrong. He's, Jesus said, I am the way. You know how many, show me a song book with a bunch of songs wrote about Buddha. What are, they, what are the kids doing in a Buddhist temple? Just a little kid get up. Buddha would me this, I know. For Confucius, tell me so. No, they, they ain't no such thing as a song book about Buddha. You know what people do when they're happy? They sing. People sing when they're happy. And the reason there's so many songs about Christianity is we're a happy people. Bless the Lord, we got something to sing about. Jesus, our substitute. He paid the price. The just for the unjust. He's our pinch hitter. He's our daysman. Number five, quickly. Number five, quickly, this morning. We'll see him as the risen Savior. Amen. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. 500 people saw him after he got out of the grave. Eyewitnesses. More people witnessed Jesus Christ alive after his crucifixion than witnessed the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. And I don't know anybody who doubts the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. People say, you know Abraham Lincoln got assassinated? Oh, I don't believe that. Men wrote that. You know why you don't doubt it? Because the devil don't care if you believe that. You know why you doubt the Bible? He don't want you to believe that. See that if you feel that spirit working against you when it comes to the Bible, you got all these weird questions messing with your head, man. Uh, you better make up your mind. Listen, there's more eyewitnesses saw Jesus Christ and documented than there was the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Thank God he's alive. He's risen. There's you something to shout about. Y'all know me, I like basketball. To me, basketball is the only sport that in which you can use all your skills. And it's basketball is the only sport in which it makes sense to me. I mean, all the other ones, I, they're, they're okay, I guess. But right now, they're having the NBA playoffs. And I like to watch them guys. I do. I enjoy it. But my goodness, people, they make absolute pe people. 
King James? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You done crossed the line there, buddy. There ain't no King James. Amen. That, that Bible said pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Well, the calf, I heard him the other day say, who's the calves? Oh, the warriors, the calves, the warriors. And I said, look, it ain't going to make a bit of difference. We don't get a dime of that either way. Listen, it's just a game, people. Can I say something to you? It's just a game. It's a game. I like it. I love to, I love to play. I'd rather play than watch somebody play. But I'm telling you, it's a ball game, people. It's a game. It's not serious. It don't matter. It don't matter. I've heard people say, go, go, yeah, yeah. And they're like, Jesus died for your sins and you ain't going to hell. And they go, there's something wrong with your response system, buddy. There's something wrong with you. You either don't believe this or you're living like the devil. If you believe it, it's going to produce some kind of response in you. Lord, they get on there. <laughs> I'd hate, I can't believe how some of them people look I mean, purple hair and baby diaper pins stuck through their nose and everything over a stupid ball game. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I like to watch it. I get to I watch everyone I can. I want to see them get in a fight. Make it good. I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, but I, I tell you something, brother. Listen, Jesus is the risen Savior. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Number six, we see him ascended as our intercessor. Now, what does that mean? That means he's making intercession for us right now. I talked to a lady on the bus route yesterday, and I could tell the second I talked to her that drugs were destroying life. Just, you know, you can, just the way she acted. I mean, she's on drugs. And she said, I know you, Danny. And she named off somebody, kin folks, somebody comes here to church. And I said, yeah, I know who you're talking about. And, and is it me and, is it me, was it me and you, Dennis? Dennis was with me, and when I asked her to church, she said, she said, I'm 58 years old, and you're the first preacher that's ever come and invited me to church. I don't know if I believe that or not. It might be true, but anyway, she said, she said, I don't know what's wrong. She said, God, don't speak to me no more. She said, I used to get feeling talking to me, and I, I said, ma'am, them drugs are going to destroy you. Pills will kill you. Do you hear me? They'll kill you. You're going to be in the grave soon, and the devil will keep your mind all messed up. The best therapy, the best rehab in the world is commit your life to God. And you know what I told her? I said, do you want God to speak to you? She said, yeah. I said, there, he spoke to you right there. Read this book. When I read this book, God speaks to me. Voices don't come out of the clouds and through the trees. He speaks through his word. Don't say God don't speak to you. Read it. He'll speak to you. Amen. He's our intercessor. He'll help us. He's able to meet Every need of every person in here. Lastly, and I'm through. We see Jesus coming again. Just like he said. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. The angel said this same Jesus that you've seen go up is going to come back in like manner. Amen. You know, when you're a person, I was thinking about Miss Rachel and them driving home this evening. She's going to be driving down to Jacksonville, Florida this evening after church. And I'm, I'm not, I drove down there lots of times. I'll be going in, in a couple of weeks, Lord willing. And, and when you get down there, you get down in the lower part of South Carolina, you'll, say something, you'll see a sign that says Jacksonville, 119 or something like that. And then, is that what it is? Thank you, <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And, um, what did you say it was? 146. 146 miles. Uh, the man who owns half of Gatlinburg answered that question for us. But anyway, I knew it was something like that. And then you get, there's a big sign about 30 miles down the road. There's one that says 110. What's the next one say, Smarty? All right. There's another. And then one says 98. Then one a little closer, 84. Then another, Jacksonville, 72. Another one, Jacksonville, uh, uh, you know, 38. Then you start seeing more and more signs. And they're on both sides of the road. Alligators. Come to this. Come to see that. 38 miles get, uh, Jacksonville. 27 miles. And by the time you get about 15 miles there, brother, it's all, you can't even read all. You'd wreck if you read all them signs. I mean, it's Jacksonville, 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 Jacksonville. Okay, I'm in Jacksonville. I get it. Jacksonville, Jacksonville, Jacksonville. Jack, I mean, they're everywhere. And they, as you get closer to that destination, the signs increase in intensity and frequency. 
You get that? There's always, people say, oh, there's always been earthquakes. Yeah, but as you get closer to coming to the Lord, the signs increase in intensity and frequency. We're seeing them so fast now you can't even write them down. The world has fell out from under. Listen, we don't, ain't, ain't none of us in here that knows how close we are on the brink of nuclear war right now. That, that crazy nut over there, and where, that little dude, <laughs> look like he's about 14, little fat-faced boy. Uh, good Lord, who, what kind of nut is that? He's making nuclear, well, Jim, Kim Jong or whoever he is, Jaws, uh, uh, Kim Jaws. And uh, I, I tell you what, brother, he's making nuclear war. He's, he's trying to run us down. I mean, they're, right now, everybody's got bombs pointing right at each other, just waiting on one person to hit them. We don't know, but the signs are increasing in intensity and frequency. You can't turn the news on now without seeing something biblically related to the Bible. And Jesus is coming back as King of kings and Lord of lords, as the, as the bridegroom for the church and as the king for the world. He's coming after his church, you and I that are saved. And one day he'll come and rule and reign, brother. He'll straighten that mess in Saudi Arabia out. I mean, he'll get them guys over there and say, shut up, I'm taking over. I didn't come to take sides, I come to take over. And we'll rule and reign with that same Jesus that we sung about today for a thousand years on this earth. And then John said, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. The bride adorned for her husband will live forever in our new home, prepared by our bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we'll see him when he comes again. We see Jesus. So when the Bible says we see Jesus, we don't see him right now with these eyes. But I guarantee you, while I've been preaching, some of you have saw him. One day, one day, with these eyes glorified, I'll see him face to face and sing the story saved by grace. Amen. We see Jesus. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed. Every eye closed.